Okay, one more of these folks. Uh, nothing fancy. We'll do this real quick. Starting out wide, we're going to zoom in on Nebraska and then to Fremont, Nebraska, and look at an area called uh, or an area around Nickerson and Fontenelle and Arlington, which is east and northeast of Fremont. I'm going to turn on some little red symbols that you'll probably see showing up over the river. Uh, in this area or section, there is one, two, three, four, five bridges that will get you over the Elkhorn River. What I wanted to show you is like this community over here to the east. Uh, there's a lot of folks that travel to Fremont for work or school or activities. And inversely, there's people in Fremont that provide services to those folks like trash companies, uh, delivery services, uh, and so forth. And what happened is two of these bridges, Arlington and Nickerson, uh, are not passable. You can't get down these highways. The bridge is fine, but this section of the road on Highway 30 by Arlington is gone. Right now, this shot is in Arlington, taking off heading west. Over there in the horizon, about five miles down this highway, is Fremont. This road has traveled a lot as folks go to work or go to school. And what I want you to notice, I'm going to zoom in on this section. Uh, all that piled up there, that is sand. As the river flooded this area, and this is happening a lot, a bunch of sand gets deposited up on farm fields, and people can't plant. There's a lot of farmers that are saying they won't be able to plant certain acres this year because of uh, all the sand that uh, they can't remove. Past the bridge, going down this road, Highway 30, we're going to get to the biggest obstacle right now, which is this sort of pond slash lake which you would think it's shallow like oh we'll just put some dirt in there and put a new road down that's not the case the Fremont Tribune did an article on this and they're saying it's like 500 feet wide or long I don't know how wide it is from one end of the highway to the other but it's 500 feet wide um, from left to right on the screen and a, as much as 20 feet deep. So this is a much larger logistical problem um, than people probably you know, would anticipate. And there's problems underneath that dark water that you can't see. So it's not just patching the highway that got carved away as the water went from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. The water would fall off on the right side or the south side and you'll just carve that carve that away now you have to bring in just truckloads of dirt and i i mean i even asked myself i don't know if this is even a possibility but would it be more financially feasible to like just build a bridge like how much dirt and trucking would you have to pay for where it's more financially viable to just build a bridge there uh, and that's coming from a guy who really doesn't know anything about building roads and bridges, but it's, there's a reason this is going to take close to six months before people can travel down this road. And that's assuming we don't get more flooding in an area that's already compromised. This shot here is kind of low and showing you the effects of something called the hydraulic jump. I don't know who said it, that term in a previous comments or a, comments on a previous video, but the guy said the term is called hydraulic jump, if I'm remembering that correctly. And the hydraulic jump is as that water comes from the top of the screen and then over the road and drops on the other side, it doesn't just flow over and keep going. It creates like this turning pattern, or I guess it might get stuck. Uh, and, and I don't know if that's the same as what created that big pond. I do know that somehow the water got stuck in that gap where that sort of small lake is now where the water must have been stuck in a current and dug a hole or dug a new pond there if that's the same effect just on a bigger scale as what we're seeing that carved out this side of the road but this has happened on the majority of the four or five miles between Arlington and Fremont you can see it to a lighter degree a lighter degree in this shot uh, the water came from the right side of the screen went over the highway fell down to the, the other side, and just gradually carved away. This is a shot from West Point during the peak of the flooding. 
take a notice of all the bubbles or the aerating of the water as it churns itself dropping down the side of this road you can't see the road but there's a road there along that power line this is an example of hydraulic jump while the water was flowing over the road so i want you to see this and then compare it to this diagram or this illustration this was an example i found that kind of shows the dangers of getting caught in this if you're a person because those little bubbles kind of show the aeration that when that occurs you don't float you lose your buoyancy and then you also notice the arrows are showing that it's going to create a, uh, a churning pattern. And that churning, not only is it going to get the person stuck in that entrapment zone, but it's also going to turn a, a bunch of that dirt, turn a bunch of the soil, and compromise that and take the foundations of that and send it downstream. So now, when we look at this shot again, you can kind of understand what happened as the water went over the highway. It started digging. And once it got started, it was easy for it to just get um, more severe. And it happened over, like I said, there's maybe four or five miles. I would, I would imagine like 80% of this has this much, or this kind of damage. And the people that lived along this, they said, yeah, we've, we've had floods before, but you just pump out your basement and you move on. But it's never been... Uh, at this scale, at least not in several generations. No one, no one's ever seen this before. So moving up from Arlington towards uh, the Nickerson Fontenelle area, uh, I didn't go from the Nickerson side. It's hard to get close. I can only go so far. So I ended up going the long way around uh, through Fontenelle, and you can get to the base of the hill from the Fontenelle side. And this section of highway, Highway 91 is the one that's compromised. Taking off, we are at the bottom of the hill from Fontenelle, looking west. Uh, Nickerson is just past those trees. And if you notice off to the right, upper right corner of the screen, that's the river there. And you'll see how the river has cut a path through that tree line where it was normally, in, like where it normally flowed. Instead of flowing towards the bridge, which is down this road, it cut through the tree line, pulled all the sand through, dumped it over, I don't know how many acres, but this is happening a lot. There's farmers that are just losing acres and acres and acres of farm ground. And it's just almost logistically not possible for them to remove all that sand. Uh, this road, in my opinion, seemed to do a lot worse when it comes to that, the damage, uh, instead of just losing its shoulder, it lost entire chunks or like as much as, uh, 90%. There's a good chunk there missing. And similar to highway 30, you have like this new pond slash lake. I didn't see an article about that one as far as how deep it was. The other one was 20 feet deep. So I don't know if this one is as deep or deeper, but um, this one, they had an actual crew on working on it. And that's not to say like, oh, they're not doing their job or, you know, why aren't they fixing these roads? I'm not trying to be critical. Um, the state of Nebraska has to prioritize like out of how many hundreds of miles of road that are compromised or closed, you know, they got to choose the most important one. So I imagine there's a lot of work going on around Omaha. There's a lot of traffic that goes in Omaha. So I'm, I imagine if I could get a hold of a Nebraska Department of Roads person, or if they want to reach out to me and contact me and kind of fill me in, I'd be more than happy to hear that information. So I'm sure there's a uh, limited um, labor available. So all they have now is this single side dump trailer that will show up dumped by that excavator and he'll just push it out. And like, to me, it looks like they're trying to push it out so they can get all the way across but I don't know how many cubic yards of soil they're going to have to bring in just for that or where they're even going to get it all from. There's some farmers saying they might try to dig up some of the sand out of their fields to patch some of their roads or their private lanes or uh, private roads to some of their fields. But it's all, it, it's all a big problem. Um, and then 
I took this shot because I thought maybe I could get a sense of how deep it was. You can see the silhouette of a piece of concrete down there. So you can kind of sense, like if you were to jump in that water, it's not going to go just to your knees. Like it looks like it might go up to your chest or more. It's uh, quite substantial. That and there's cables that were underneath these roads that were dug out. You can kind of see that along the broken concrete. There's some cables that were washed out. In comments in previous videos, there's some guys that said uh, these cables can be old, obsolete cables from, you know, who knows what era that they don't use anymore. Or they could be like internet data cables. Okay, I'm going to start wrapping this up. But I want to show you a few photos that I've been shooting with a different drone. Uh, this these photos are made with a drone that I can mount different camera bodies onto and they shoot a little bit nicer and I'll explain that in a different video. But I'm not always going to be doing flood coverage stuff and my YouTube channel or Facebook page for this won't uh, always be coverage of flood after effects or flood aftermath. What I would like to do is get a uh, group of people to kind of support photography around Nebraska and what I would do depending on how I create the system I'll uh, give these photos away to supporters with with the right to get them printed anywhere they want so I'll give them like full resolution files and they can go print these photos and it'll be photos around Nebraska uh, I haven't out I haven't ironed out all the details but uh, subscribe to the channel when I can when I do get that figured out, I'll post a video and you'll know when that's posted and we can kind of discuss a, a system that might work. So thank you and have a good day.